globally. Wow. In Atlanta, Georgia, protesters have taken over Woodruff Park, a.k.a. the Troy Davis Park, a known homeless park in the Five Points area of Georgia. I see it's really organized, nice, clean. You got tents, different, total, total di different flavor from New York City. Yeah. Well, New York also has a lot more people than us, but um, I guess I guess the trade-off is that the people who are out here are probably a lot more um, a lot more zealous about it. Um, like I've been out here since day one. Um, this is the tenth day, and um, I've slept here almost every night. Um, wow! Like. Like, we take it seriously, like, we're really starting to do something here. And you have to if you want to get something accomplished, because we're basically trying to start from scratch and, like, rebuild society. What we're doing is we're fighting against the corruption of politicians as well as the policies that are being, you know, given to the, what you call, you know, corporations and entities of that nature as well as lobbyists, you know, which needs to be that these people that have these big time corporations shouldn't be able to make it legal for them to place their products outside the country to be used on products that come back inside the country. What this movement is about is being against those people who take what is not, what they have not earned. Uh, those people who irresponsibly and unethically were doing trading up in Wall Street that took away 20% of the wealth of this country. And while the 99% of us are just doing our hard work day to day, and there are people who are being duped into thinking that those, they are those people and that we're trying to take their money. Nobody's trying to take a small business owner's money. We're only trying to keep greedy people from being more greedy. Well, we're actually from the suburb of Norcross, and we brought our kids down here to show them what democracy can be, and to show them that even if 1% of all the money and lots of power, one vote is still one vote. And you can't actually buy one person to have two votes. So people need to vote if they want to change what's different. I love what they're doing here in the park. But the next step is voter registration and get people. If you want to have an effective president, you need to have an effective Congress. And we don't have that. So I want people to get out there and vote. And I want to show my kids that they can make a difference just by participating in our democracy. I came down because a young lady talked about it on the train. Uh -huh. And she said, you need to go. And she was a black sister. She said, you need to go and be a part of it. She said, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go down and see. And I noticed that it's about Americans. It's not about power. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to get power. I don't know anything about any of the people who organized this, so I'm not going to lie. Right. But one thing I can say, it's reaching people everywhere. We come together as Americans. We're not coming together for no power. Yes. We come together because what are we going to do for our children, children, children in a land and there's no place like America. So tell me about the organization of here. Like I see they got the food station, they got the tent. Do they have committees? Because I know they have a general assembly. How does it work here? We do have committees. Um, the committees are semi-autonomous, but most of, a lot of the organization here, like where the tents are and like how the food's working, that just happened organically. Like we um we had our tent set up one way. Um, then the sprinklers came on. We had to move them. Then we noticed patches of grass were getting eaten up, so we had to move them. Uh, we're we're adapting to figure out what works best. This the way we've got it set up right now works really well. Um, Have they tried to run you out? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, Monday. They showed up, there were about 60 of us here. Um, we heard from a city council member. Um, we got on the down low, we got warned that the police were planning to come in, run everyone out, and anyone who wouldn't leave, arrest them. So there were only about 60 of us here when we heard that. We all um, got on our phones and blew up. Uh, Facebook and Twitter, social networking sites, uh, called and texted everyone by the time 11 o'clock rolled around, which is when the uh, park, when the, the park closes, mm -hmm. uh, according to the state. We had somewhere around 300 people here. Um, it had changed from eight people who were willing to stay in the park indefinitely and get arrested to 
about 40 sitting in a circle in the park, arms locked. Um, we got all the other people who weren't gonna sit in the circle with us to uh, stand on the sidewalk where it's legal to be and make a bunch of noise, get, get everyone's attention. The cops came in numbers. About two dozen cops were two blocks in every direction. There, there was a bomb squad. There were mounted police. They had buses ready to take us away. Uh, about five or six cops came. Tuck tail and ran. Two that was days. victory. That was victory. That, that was, was a victory. The, the first battle for Troy Davis Park. Wow. Victorious. The occupants are quite diverse consisting of 70 to 100 campers who've been camping out since the beginning of the takeover. So who's supplying you guys and how, keeping you all afloat, making sure everything goes? Ma'am, all I know is I'm safe. Mm. Wow. So people have been dropping off donations and things, bringing by water? The, the, the general public. To help y'all sustain this movement? Yes, ma'am. So how long do you plan on being out here? As long as it takes. That's right, that's right. So you get a lot of donations, a lot of different food. You feed breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything? All day long. Stretch at like 2 o'clock this morning. Okay, all right. That's really good. That's really good. And so then what got you involved with this? Well, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. and I used to sell my jewelry here in this park. And they ran me off. They locked me up. Like seven years straight, they locked me up. Wow. And they wanted me to pay $2,000 a month to sit on the corner of that wall in mm -hmm. Walton Street. So I bought him alone for seven years for, by, by myself. Seven years. For seven years by myself. I don't know. I just prayed. Told God to send me some help. And that's the result of it. So you're ready to fight. I'm ready to die. How you doing, ma'am? You alright? In his pain, Copper still manages to smile and greet the various groups that come down to support the movement. What, are you, what is your reason for being out here? I'm here to lend my support and a message of hope to global peace and not only just for Occupy Atlanta, but for the, the forward progress of all human rights issues. My name is Apostle James Holmes. I'm a member of AMOG, which is an almighty movement of God. Our movement is based out of Atlanta, but it's a global movement because it's inspired by the Spirit of God. Members from Move.org also joined in the movement. However, they were met with a bit of controversy as to whether or not their political agenda contradicts the Occupy Wall Street's economic agenda. You know, I'm a member of MoveOn.org, and I understand what the protesters are here doing, but I also understand what MoveOn's doing, and I think MoveOn is recognizes that beyond a protest you actually have to vote do something that changes it because as much as this is democracy in action in this small park mm -hmm. it's not making an impact on the rest of the world if the rest of the world in this country i think votes right. so they, i think move on's doing the right thing in terms of getting people to be political and get out there and vote but i understand that it's a slightly different goal than what right. the, the folks here have mm -hmm. but but it's all the same I, think, I mean, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, I think larger goal is is very much the same, right. but their their efforts are a little different. So well, I, I think, understand there'll be differences in what they're how they're trying to get where they're trying to go. We need this mm -hmm. because, as you can feel, Atlanta has a lot of homeless people, and they walk around and they have nowhere to go. This gives them a second opportunity to to say, "Look, this is my life. I allow these situations. I made these choices. Let me go and be a part of." Occupy Atlanta to make this world a better place, to make America a better place. So it gives the homeless to get off their, um, to get up and say, I took the start again. Because yes. this is America movement. This yes. is for America. So it gives us of all America a second chance. I work for an agency where people come into our agency to apply for benefits. Mm -hmm. And we have seen a, a large increase of people coming in who have never applied for food stamps before in their life because they've lost their jobs. And then you have somebody, um, for example, Chris Christie, talking down to people like, or um, Herman Cain, talk, telling people, oh, you poor because you want to be poor. No, they're not. Who wants to be poor? Who wants to, be poor? Who wants to sleep on the ground? Yes. Really? Come on. Herman Cain, really? They try to say that the homeless is one of the, what, weak, uh, uh, 
weak, lazy populations, but they're not. You got to look at it. About 55% of the homeless is actually, you know, ex-war veterans. That when they came back home, they found out their shit was off. They found out that, you know, their children wasn't taken care of. And America didn't take care of me. You know know what I'm saying? We fight for a country that don't give a fuck about us. John Planacy. And you know, you're a veteran. It's like, these are some of the issues that we're talking about, we're fighting about, you know? Veterans coming home from war or just in general serving the country and they have no employment. How dare you, America, right? Well, I was partner for 30 years until a uh, very debilitating form of arthritis struck me, mm-hmm. which is bone spurs. And I have them from the T9 down to JL5, and my left hip shot. Mm. Wow. And uh, I put in a claim with VA, been denied twice. I'm not through fighting them yet. That's right. I just want to find the right lawyer that knows VA law and continue my fight. Thank you. Well, hopefully, I'm some a people Vietnam will veteran. Vietnam era veteran. Yeah. Mm. And uh, right now, this is the only way I make more money. Wow. So it's kind of powerful out here. It seems as though everyone is definitely coming together. Uh, with the various different organizations that are here. We even have Sunday service there with the church is, uh, showing their support and bringing in donations. Uh, one church, I understand, actually dropped in the bucket uh, the offering that they had the church congregation took up for today's Sunday, uh, this Sunday morning. So if you look around here, you see the tents. It's almost like a tent city. The grass looks good, it looks nice and clean, a little bit different than it is down in New York, Occupy Wall Street. Um, a little bit, it appears to be, look like it's a little bit more organized, but yet the issue is still the same, as you've heard from the various different people that we spoke with. Occupy Wall Street, the 99%, that's who we all are, that we represent. What are your thoughts about this here, Occupy Atlanta? You know what's happening all over now in the 90 cities. But Occupy Atlanta, it looks a little clean, and looks a little organized, a little bit more so than uh, New York City, but yet, any similarities in terms of the issues and the reason why they should be sp- speaking out, or? Uh, there's a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, you know, you get, because you had so many different social stratifications from people who are under the uh, influence of narcotics or mm. alcohol, uh, flat out homeless, uh, you know, maybe just uh, impoverished, uh, maybe middle class, upper middle class, college students or whatever, People are here for all different uh, reasons. Most people are, uh, you know, are everybody's affected, but they don't really have the tools to articulate because they're not politically educated or aware. So uh, there's a lot of that. The people that are actually spearheading or, or so-called running this, it's really just a monologue. There's no dialogue with all these different social stratifications. I watched the other night. Uh, they had a kid here that had got arrested at the Capitol. So the kid uh, comes through here, and he's uh, this gentleman right here, as a matter of fact, just uh, went behind me. Oh, and so he okay. said, well, hey. You know, uh, one of these guys just got locked up. So everyone's crowding around with concern, legitimate mm-hmm. concern, because he's concerned about a uh, comrade, if you will. And so uh, one of the guys comes through, and, and it was the first time, the first night that I got here that I saw, it was a sham, so to speak, in, in many instances, because the first thing he did, well, everyone just get back. No one was bocarding the guy negatively. They just they were concerned. Well, hey, what's going on? Are you okay? Because he was hyperventilating and things like that. So... In doing that, oh, well, everyone just step back. And when I say step back, I don't mean just two steps. Get back. That's not how you talk to people, especially when wow. you're dealing with the general public, that you don't know where their mindset is. That's right. You don't know uh, who they are, what they're willing to do. People are here uh, for very, 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 very trying reasons. And so, uh, again, it's always where when we see the so-called uh, Caucasian or, or white, uh, you want to bogart and, you know, just take control of every little thing. There's not enough of uh, us as so-called blacks and Afro-Americans here from all social stratifications, right. uh, from, you know, the gangster on the street corner and whoever that's getting involved. Because even there on the street corner, you can't make the money like that if they don't have the money for you to make because people, are, they're hurting right now. The lack of diversity in the presence of people of color is a prevailing question at many acts. Essentially, why are there not enough people of color? when the majority of these issues disproportionately affect communities of color even more. 
economics, joblessness, unemployment, lack of housing, foreclosures, increased tuition rates. Alanian's response is that everyone of all race should get involved because this is an American issue. The race issue is a big deal. Um, Troy Davis was executed, yes. was murdered by the state very recently, and that's um, a lot of the people here were really involved in his campaign for freedom. Yeah, they and, said this is Troy Davis Park, right? Yeah, this is Troy right. Davis Park. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just last night, um, a kid was shot in the West End by the cops in the back. 19-year-old um, kid, unarmed, coming home from a, from like a homecoming game or something, got shot. He's dead. Police brutality is is another thing we're serious about fighting here. And even though the police are trying to enforce the law, they're part of the 99 cent. They are nothing but a little small pond. You know what I'm saying? With, you know, guppies trying to run away from big fish. Wow. But yeah, you know, because they have a badge on their shoulder and it's nice and shiny, it seems like they get confused when they look at that badge and understand that they're to protect and serve. They're several uh, civil uh, servants. This is not a black or white thing or Hispanic Any thing or thing. Asian thing. This is an American thing. We are Americans. Yeah. We are human people who have feelings who have gone to college, who have worked hard, and they lost their homes, they lost their jobs. They did what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They did exactly what they were supposed to do according to society. Mm -hmm. And because of money, power, and greed, they've lost it all. And until you address the problem and resolve it, you're gonna always have it. So you need to pay attention to what's going on. When you talk about racism, uh, which it's oversimplified and talked about today, uh, synonymous to that is classism. So, you know, it makes it appear because you might see somebody like Michael Jackson come from Gary and Adam Small Shack or uh, 50 Cent or other guys, you know, to make a transition that any and everybody can do it. And that's not the case. There's a bigger gap, as we all know, as heralded today popularly between the have and the have nots. Uh, we are, we don't represent the 99%, we are the 99%, especially considering that capitalism was uh, developed, uh, incorporated off the very backs and skin and blood, sweat and tears that we are, uh, you know, invoked. Uh, with chattel slavery and chattel uh, is indicative of uh, you know uh, private property and that's what capitalism is all about private property so it's from that in and of itself that these guys sit and thrive off of uh, you know they want to have their cake and eat it too you know you stole you robbed you killed from you know the natives uh, and these all, all it really is is just uh, they, those they're, 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 those are blacks there has to be a redefinition of what it is to be black anybody either you're somebody of indigenous uh, culture and hue or you're somebody that is uh, in, outside of that and collectively speaking, uh, you know, all you've ever done in our own lifetime and experience and from what we can look back through in the history, you've lied, stolen, and killed. Mm. You know, so uh, yeah, there has to be something where, you know, you wake up, uh, you know, educate, get out, and you get radical because they're getting radical with you and I. Uh, this is not a game. They will and they are killing you. talk about how do you relate to it in the sense that how do you like you also benefit from the same privileges that she named and how have you been harmed by, or how have you been harmed by those same people? Okay, the reason that we're out here today is because we're having a conversation about white privilege and anti-racism and how um, white privilege and um, white supremacy shows up in even the most progressive spaces and how we as white people need to directly confront privilege and address the ways in which race plays out in order to build a true alternative and new society with racial justice. This is more than just a local or national issue. This is international. Uh, we tried to do it with the Bandoon Conference in 54. Uh, you know, Rivera, all these different guys were trying to come together. Malcolm, Paul Robeson, who uh, you know, came with this idea about an a, a international approach about a human rights violation. We tried to get it going, and each time it shut down because in doing that, again, when you have an economic shutdown, you have uh, synonymous to that, an ecological one, because the resources that they capitalize from is from the land, uh, whether it be oil, bauxite, uh, copper, gold, diamonds, all these things come from the land. And many of these uh, European nations, uh, America itself, does not have those things. You know, so uh, it's just a thing where, again, we have to uh, first release off of, uh, you know, these other third world nations. And in doing that, uh, then we can be okay here. As far as blacks, you can't be free and uh, under comfort here. And yet, uh, Mother Africa is not okay. So everything has got to be free. Wherever we're on the diaspora, but it starts at home. Mm -hmm. Dr. Martin Luther King gave a message of inspiration and hope. 
and Atlanta is recognized all over the globe as the city that is too busy to hate. If that be true, then I think that every citizen in the state of Georgia and in the city of Atlanta should live by that motto and live up to that position. That is one of the reasons why I'm here, to lend my support to that. Deshaun, you banks on the mic, you know what I'm saying? So check it. I keep crying, landing, spitting fire, spitting high. We going super saiyan. Y'all niggas ain't in this fire. I'm sorry, I got to do it. Everybody know the whole system is just screw it up. Man, I'm talking, people is taking money. People is taking my honeys. I'm looking like with my money. Like, God dang, I got a bank with Bank of America. Lost 20, $25 because I ain't got enough money. It's kind of scary, yeah. Uh, we sit like malaria. Y'all niggas tripping this. I'm sipping, I'm tripping this. Sipping y'all to my flow with just a cold. Tell me what I don't know. Capitalism, capitalism is communism with a mask on. Deshaun just said it. Ain't nobody else pass it on to Wall Street in this song.